Hello, fourth grade. Welcome to our virtual class for the third quarter, week five. This is me, Teacher Helen, your subject teacher for science, English, and MAPE subjects. As we start our session, let us pray first. All together, let us bow down our head and put ourselves into the presence of the Lord. Dear God, thank you for protecting me through the night. I praise you and give you thanks with all the blessings that you have bestowed on me. Lord, I give you all my words, thoughts, and actions and consecrate them to you. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. For you, O Lord, are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now let's have the Pambansang Awit ng Pilipinas. And let's sing all together. Personification, distinguishing faction from non-faction, and lastly, we have prepositions, compound prepositions, and prepositional phrases. So let us start with understanding personifications. So, what is personification? It is a type of figures of speech. Okay, we have simile, metaphor, and now we have the third personification. It is when you assign the qualities of a person to something that is not human. So, example, we have the stars danced playfully in the moonlit sky. Second, the river swallowed the earth as the water continued to rise. So, stars is the noun being compared to a human quality or a person quality which is dance. Okay, the underlying words dance and swallowed are qualities of a person which is a uh, compared to a noun that is not human stars and river so another example so let us try to answer encircle the subject personified in each sentence underline the human trait again encircle the subject personified and underline the human tree. The ocean waves lashed out at the boat. So in this sentence, what is the subject? Ocean waves, correct. And the human trait, 
personified is Flush. Number two. My computer throws a fit every time I try to use it. Okay, what is the subject? Computer, correct. What is the human trait? Throws. Okay, throws is a human trait. That is an example of personification. Okay, we have number three. The thunder grumbled like an old man. Okay, the noun in the sentence is, or the subject is thunder. And the human trait is grumbled. Fourth, the flowers waltz in the gentle breeze. So imagine the flower dance. Okay, the subject in this sentence is flower. And the uh, human trait is waltz. Okay, understandable, right? Personification is very easy. It is when you assign the qualities of a person to something that is not human. Now let us go to fiction. Distinguishing fiction from non-fiction. So, fiction are stories created through the imagination of the authors. These stories are not true. Again, fiction are not true. Non-fiction are true stories about real people, things, and events. Non-fiction, true stories. So, let us distinguish by this example. Fiction, Juan Tamad and his friends. So, that is fiction. Because you don't know who is Juan Tamad, who is his friends. Okay. About non-fiction is, example, the poems of Jose Rizal. So, we know that there are a lot of poems and novels Jose Rizal Compose. This includes his uh, great novels, the No Limit Tanghue and El Calibos Terismo. We also know Jose Rizal that it is he was our national hero and he is a poet. So that is example of nonfiction. So here, let us try. Write fiction or non-fiction on the line. Number one, fairies appeared in the dark forest. Again, fairies appeared in the dark forest. Fiction or non-fiction? The answer is... Fiction! Fairies are not true. Number two, beyond the rainforest, Rose the kingdom of elves. Again, beyond the rainforest, rose the kingdom of elves. Fiction or non-fiction? The answer is... Fiction. Correct. Elves are not true. Third, we have... Dr. Jose Protasio Rizal lives in Calamba, Laguna, Philippines. Fiction or non-fiction? The answer is non-fiction. Is it? This is a true statement. Fourth, on the 12th day of February, Chinese celebrates their Lunar New Year's Day. Fiction or non-fiction? Non-fiction. So, this statement is true. So, today is February 12 and the Chinese celebrates their New Year's Day. Kong He Fa Choi. So, now let's ask uh, 
introduce another skill in English which is the preposition. What is preposition? It's a word that comes before a noun or pronoun to show noun's relationship to another word in the sentence. In short, are words that connect nouns, pronouns, and phrases. Some of the most common prepositions are on, in, at, under, and across. So there is uh, many nursery songs that you can find in YouTube about prepositions. One of them is this. In, on, under, in front of, behind, next to, between, in, on, under, in front of, behind, next to, between. So that those are examples or common prepositions. So prepositions connect nouns, pronouns, and phrases. There are types of prepositions. We have compound prepositions, simple prepositions, and also the prep prepositional phrases. So let's start with pre prepositional phrases. Is a group of words containing a preposition a noun or pronoun, object of the preposition, and any modifiers of the object. Example Number 1. Arthur puts the vase on the table. 2. He places the plates in the cupboard. 3. He sets the pot of plant at the door. The red color words on, in, at are example of prepositions. Now, how will prepositions become prepositional phrases? It is where the preposition and a noun or a pronoun object of the preposition and any modifiers of the object contain. So, example, from on to the object of the preposition which is the table so from on to table that is an example of prepositional phrase on the table in the cupboard at the door these are examples of what are they prepositional phrase Again, prepositional phrase containing preposition and the noun or the pronoun object of the preposition and any modifiers of the object. So that was prepositional phrase. The second one is the compound prepositions. So what are compound prepositions? Composed of two or three words. Some of the most common prepositions are due to, in spite of, in front of, with regard, and because of. Mm, two to three words, prepositions. So as you can see in the examples, there are two words, others have three words. Example, we have to take physical education or PE along with all other academic subjects. So in the sentence, along with is an example of compound prepositions, which describes the noun or pronoun object of the prepositions, academic subjects. So, as you can see, the compound preposition in the sentence composed of two words along with. Number two, because of the bad weather, we stayed at home. In the sentence, what is the comp compound preposition? Okay, we have because of. It composed of two words. And it is 
uh, containing a noun bad water next we have number three father has reached his high position by means of his own abilities without help in this sentence what is the compound preposition used it is by means of so it contains three words by means of and it describes the father's abilities so that is an example of compound preposition it composed of two to three words so i hope that you understand our english uh, sub skills again we discuss personification next is fiction from non-fiction and prepositions now let's have your mape mape we have your art and your music so in art we have stencil printing so are you done making it uh, some of you are not yet done and others may also done okay do not in, in your module do not include the explore which is let sunshine print do not include that because our weather this week is always raining uh, hindi nagpapakita si haring araw kaya wag niyo nang isali ang let sunshine print just go to transfer which is the stencil printing it any cloth it will be t-shirt handkerchief or else or others so stencil printing so that was stencil printing in stencil printing or stencil design you can print your design and then you will cut it through the use of cutter and you will use textile ink so that the printed the prints will not dry out and if you will ask if i use film uh, stencil film no i didn't use stencil film i used bond paper because it is easy to cut so if you have more questions about stencil print making you can watch my instructional video in our uh, facebook group mcsyl grade 4 patients I already uploaded it in the video. Next, we have volume of sound in music. So, it's it talks about dynamics. So, dynamics refers to the loudness or softness of the different parts of a musical piece. So, in musical compositions, if you read musical compositions and you can see dynamic symbols the P and the F this is how will you play the music so for example uh, dynamic symbols includes P symbol for piano which means soft and F which means forte which means loud so a musical piece mark softly and loudly 
you will find it in the different compositions of the song so for example the song is entitled Entitled Mary Had a Little Lamb. If the first musical phrase of the Mary Had Little Lamb, you can see a P symbol, which means that if you are using an instrument, you will play the instrument softly, and then right after on the fourth musical phrase of the song Mary had a little lamb it becomes F F the symbol becomes F so you will change the dynamic of the song to loud since the music mark with the symbol forte so that is why there are music we can identify musics into love song rock ballad reggae or uh, musics for uh, sorrow happiness sadness or for or for weddings because of the dynamic symbols so if you are a musician, musicians are uh, uh, must study or they study this dynamic symbol, so they will know how to play the entire music. And also, the listeners of the music will listen, or you feel feel active and happy while listening the sounds of music so it is very easy no? uh, it has only two symbols the P and the F when you are in 5th grade it will become 4 you have mezzo piano and mezzo forte since you are still in fourth grade, we will study only two dynamic symbols, piano and forte. Piano for soft, forte for loud. So, for example, when I say love songs, is it piano or forte? So, it is piano, right? Correct. Piano love songs belongs to piano category. What about rock, disco music? It belongs to forte. Correct. For loud sounds. So that's all for your mate. Now let's go to your signs, which is all about heat energy. Heat energy. So, what is heat? Where is heat came from? Okay, welcome to our lesson in science, and it's all about heat energy. So, last week we discussed light energy. Now is heat energy. So while camping on a cold night, some boys and girls set up a campfire. The heat from the fire keep them warm. Some of them roasted corns and bananas and told stories about around the campfire. So heat is useful in many ways. Heat helps you keep warm and cook foods, right? In what other ways is heat important? Okay, in this lesson, you will learn more about heat energy. Heat is a form of energy that flows between materials that have different temperatures. What about temperature? 
is the degree of hotness or coldness of the body. Heat moves from a hot body to a cold body. The figure below, or the illustration below, uh, shows heat can move from one object to another in from hot body to a cold body. So, see the illustration. From hot Heat moves from a hot body to a cold body. So, heat transfer to the cold body. And then, lastly, they will end up the same temperature. Heat can move from one object to another in three ways. What are they? Okay, we have conduction convection and radiation so what is conduction it is transfer of heat from one material to another through direct contact so example of this is pot heating up through conduction so do you watch your mother or father cook have you seen them hold the handle of a pot using a pot holder the handle is not in a direct contact with a flame. However, your mother or your father still needs to protect his or her hands when holding the handle so that they will not get born. Why is this so? So that is the conduction. Because when cooking, the heat from the flame travels to the bottom of the pan and heats it up. So from the bottom, and it will travels to the entire pan, spreads toward the handle. This transfer of heat is called conduction, direct contact. So let's have the convection. Heat is transferred through the movement of heated fluids, which are liquid and gases. So, example is ice cubes melting through convection. So, and also an example for this is when you are eating ice cream, it will melt because we are, our environment is hot. Heat is everywhere. So, heat fluids which are liquids and gases in a process of convection. Convection is the process that happens when warm air or liquid rises while cool air or liquid drops. So that's what's happened to ice cubes and when you are eating ice cream. Next, we have radiation. Happens when a hot object emits or radiates a heat energy and a cold object near it absorbs the heat. So, example for radiation is this in the picture. Warming your hands through radiation. Mm. Cold object near it absorbs the heat. So, your, uh, your cold object is your hand. Then, you are going to near it in a flame. Then, the heat will absorb. You then your hands absorbs the heat that is a process called radiation. Again, heat moves in three ways conduction, convection, and radiation. This time protecting yourself from excessive heat. Heat has many uses. But excessive heat can be harmful. So the pictures below show the bad effects of heat. So in the first picture, you can see that the uh, land is barren or dry. 
dry out, no water. It cracks. What about the second picture? So, the second picture is a hot atmosphere. Ha, warm atmosphere. So, the girl is uh, trying, her, trying herself to feel comfortable by facing to the electric fan and having a fan. What about the third picture? Oh, the boy gets sick because of the warm temperature. Too much heat from the sun dries up farmlands and cause plants to wither. Staying under the heat of the sun too long also causes sunburn. It may even cause dehydration or heat stroke, especially among the elderly. A child with a high fever or high body temperature needs immediate medical attention. The temperature in the body can be determined by what instrument? To determine our body temperature, what instruments to be used? It starts with letter T. Thermometer, correct. Okay. Here are some ways to protect yourself from excessive light. Or excessive heat, I mean, rather. First, we will drink water whenever you feel thirsty. So, uh, when you travel, you must bring your own drinking bottle and fill it with water. It is very important to avoid dehydration or heat stroke. And second, avoid exposing yourself to the sun 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Why? These times are when the sun rays are strongest. So, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., huwag lumabas ng bahay kasi mainit, super init ang mga oras na iyan. Number three, cover your skin with clothes. Wear long sleeves as well as long pants or long skirts to make sure that most of your skin is covered from the sun. So, uh, do you hear the uh, disease called uh, sun disease? It can cause cancer, skin cancer, hmm. if you are always exposing to sun. Number four, we have apply sunscreen on your skin before you put on a shirt. Yeah, apply sunscreen always before going out. Uh, apply sunscreen or lotion with sunscreen. Another fifth, wear a hat or use umbrella when going out on a bright sunny day. So use sun sunglasses also or a hat or a cap or umbrella when you're going out number six six shade uh, six shade especially when you feel a burning sensation in your skin this sensation means that your skin has been exposed too long to the heat of the sun and you need some time to cool down and recover so uh, for example that you are going out with your family and then uh, you feel uh, you will say Mm, init, init ka kayo. Mm, six shade. Since that your your brain react about the heat of the sun. Six shade. This, this is the time that you will find shade. Uh, go to the, uh, go to a bahay kubo or go inside your house or go to a shade. Waiting shade to cool down and recover. Seventh, we have have your parents install or use in insulators or materials such as wood or plastic that do not easily let heat pass into your house. So that is why that some houses are not made of concrete materials. It is made of wood, bamboo, or also known as a makan. Why? 
because they are insulators of heat the heat will pass the house eight use pot holder when handling hot objects of course to avoid burning your hands so in all the sun is the main source of both light and heat heat is a form of energy that flows between materials with different temperatures heat travels from one object to another through what are those three conduction convection and radiation so i hope that you uh, learn some in our lesson this week so we are done with your science mape and english thank you for listening and see you next week i hope that we have a full signal or internet connection so thank you for listening goodbye children you cannot answer your mood